So we're here to solve this skyscrapers puzzle called prime numbers. Uh, these sort of larger digits 241, 53, 313, etc. are prime numbers. Um, with this particular skyscrapers, the one clues, as always, will just take the largest digits near them. My eye is often drawn to clues that are on both sides of the same row or column. So this two with this one is a pretty keen place to just see what the constraints really work at across the whole side, and this five, six is an immediate placement. This four and three are actually a pretty interesting pair as well. They sum up to one more than the total size of the grid. So the very first observation most people will make, and pretty trivially, is that a six goes in the cell. But another one, which we would mark on paper with greater than less than signs, is that these are all increasing series, that we've got a small building, a larger building, an even larger building in the six. And we'll also have that kind of series from below. We just can't uh, easily mark in the series. So even where, like with these notes, a three and then a two would look like they're possible, I, I'm really meaning to say that this is an increasing series. I'm just storing that in my head um, through this notation style. I've got three sixes marked, so a typical skyscraper step is to put the largest digits in that you can. Uh, this row from the left needs to still have a six, and it can't be this close to the three, but the cell, the cell, the cell all have a six in the column already, so the six goes there. Last two cells for a six will have to be across these uh, four in total. The five and three to the right don't influence things, but this three up above means the six has to be below, and the six has to go then in this cell. And uh, this makes me now come back to, as typical at, at the stage of the puzzle, the largest remaining clues. And actually, this five looks very interesting and now has exactly five cells to go. So there's some building hidden here. We don't know which, but we need to have a one, two, and a two, three, and then a three, four, and then a four, five coming across. And note as I even marked those notes coming up, I now look at the columns and see that that five is already eliminated as an option, which means I have to have the smallest series, one, two, three, four, and six, with a five hidden on the left. Um, that three I just placed puts a one, two in the cell and puts a four, five in the cell. And we can remove the threes as well down here. Now, it may not be evident from the start, but one thing to note where we've taken a small digit and then a large digit, so a digit one or two and a digit four or five, it effectively also means down here this first space will have to be the other small digit one or two, and this will be the next or other large digit four or five. But let's, let me describe it this way. If this were a four, then this cell will be a five, and this cell will also be a five, so we can eliminate that. And similarly, if this were a two here, meaning the one below is a one, the one up top is also a one. So by the time we isolate, we've got a small and a large pair still placed. We also have the other small and the other large still to place, and those will help us later in the solve, I'm pretty sure, for marking them in. The other sort of space, we have not looked at this other large clue, but this four is similarly an increasing series where this could be one or two or three coming up or two or three or four or so forth. But it now has this key constraint with five and four already in this column largest value for is three, and if that three is there, the only way to have four buildings seen is to have this series come through one, two, three, six, with a four, five uh, pair left on the far right. So we now have only a few digits to go, and maybe a few different places to look. One thing we can look at is where we know this cell on the upper left is larger than the one to its right. We do something like mark this as two, three, four, and mark this as something like one and three. Notice if this top value were a two, we would now be forcing a smaller value one here as well as a small value one there. So this actually is limited to be three and four, but that doesn't look like it's actually giving me enough to make headway, but it's you know potentially a useful spot. Another thing I'm seeing, uh, this clue still has a whole lot to go for it. This clue's got a little bit of value, but this column looks pretty prime for some progress. And I'm going to come back to the second largest digit when I'm thinking about this, knowing that this cell can't be a five. What I'm looking at is what is the influence of one of these two cells being a five, and they're going to form a pair with this set. And a thing I see uh, pretty quickly here is if this top row is the one where the five goes, this is a six, this is a five, this is a four, all of those buildings will be seen, as well as whichever digit two or three is in the space. So we cannot fulfill this three clue if this four and this five and the six are all seen. So this five has to be hiding a digit or more digits behind it, but it cannot be the last digit before that six or we're gonna have too many things seen. So this five, five, four grouping is forced uh, at that time. We've got a one, two, one, two pair coming up. This is a two, three here, and this is a one, three here. We still have uh, some fives to place. Actually, we have a five to go in these cells and a five in these cells. And this is where the outside two here becomes key. 
you can't put a 5 far away from a 2 unless it's hidden behind a 6, so the 5 must be here, 5 must be to the left, and that puts a 4 in. So this is now 2, 3, and 2, 3, and a few things to, to do to kind of finish out the grid from here. One is we can certainly track the other large digits. For instance, the 4 is forced in the first row to the only spot that can take it. But another thing is to see that this 3 clue, now all it sees this 2, 3, has to have a smaller value after it because it's going to see this cell, it's going to see the 5, and it's going to hide a larger digit like a 4 behind it. And so in marking those in, we've got all the 4s placed. We see that the 3 has to be hiding a 1 or a 2, and that puts in this 2, 1, and 3, finishes this column with a 1, 2, and 3, puts in a 2, puts in a 1. This had to be a 3. This always was a 1. That was a 2. And we finish out the grid. So pretty standard, but alternating sets of skyscraper types steps to use. After placing some large digits, we saw where they're increasing series, which were very forcing in all of these spots. And then having marked those in, and even identifying this critical 4-5 pair in these two cells was where we can now look at a column like this, where the 5 was also going to be in the same rows as over here. But the options where a 5 was up above versus a 5 down below on this left side was going to hide or not hide another large building. And that's a kind of deduction that is often the triggering last deduction of Skyscraper's puzzle. It definitely worked here to get to the finishing stages. So I hope you got a sense from this puzzle of how to think about Skyscraper's logic, and we'll see you again soon.